let's learn about the fundamental theorem of calculus. We will do that using an application problem from ISI entrance. But first, let me tell you what this fundamental theorem of calculus is all about. Suppose f is a function from an open interval like this, an open interval to real numbers and f is given to be continuous. If a is a point in this open interval, then we can define a function capital F of x as an integral from a to x f of t dt. That is for each value of x, for each value of x we can compute this integral and that would be the value of capital F of x. Then the derivative of f of x is small f of x. So it roughly says that integration and differentiation are inverse processes. There is a very beautiful intuitive explanation of why that should be true in a book called Art and Craft of Problem Solving. You can check it out. There the author gives a very beautiful intuitive description of why integration and differentiation should be inverses of each other. So one should be undoing the other one. So we will be applying the fundamental theorem of calculus in a problem from ISI entrance and see it in action. So here is the statement of the problem. It says that f is a function defined from 1 to infinity to real numbers. So this is the domain, all the positive numbers from 1 to infinity and this is the codomain, the output values are real numbers. It's also given that f of 1 is equal to 1. And finally, it's given that f prime of x, that is the derivative of x, is equal to 1 over x square plus fx whole square. By the way, it's given that f is differentiable. f is differentiable. Hence we can write f of f prime of x. So all of this is given data and our goal is to show that f of x is less than equals to 1 plus pi over 4 for every x greater than or equal to 1. That's our goal. So can you give it a try by pausing the video? I will give you one hint so that you can try the problem on your own. The hint is this that notice that f prime of x is equal to square of x plus square of f of x. But the square of x is something positive. 
and square of f of x is also positive. So this quantity right here is always positive which tells you that the derivative is always greater than zero. It's a curious output of this expression. You can infer that from this expression that the derivative of this function f prime of x is always positive. Now can you use this fact to find out this upper bound for f of x? Let's see how we can solve this. So here is a solution. Now we want to find out f of x so we will be using the fundamental theorem of calculus and we will be integrating it. If we integrate a derivative we will get that function back. That's the basic idea. So we have f dashed x is equal to 1 over x square plus fx whole square. Now I will integrate it from 1 to x. So I'll change the letter inside. So instead of x I'll write t. So f of t dt is equal to integral of 1 to x 1 over t square plus ft whole square dt. So t is just acting as the variable and as we are integrating from 1 to x. Okay. So okay, so this is f prime, sorry, that's the prime here. So this thing is quite simple. This is f of t from 1 to x and we have to worry about this part. Now notice that fx is always greater than 1. Why? Well, we know that f prime of x is greater than 0. That, that's what we found in the previous discussion. f of 1 is 1. That is given in the problem that f of 1 is 1. Since f dashed is always positive, for all x greater than 1, fx will also be greater than 1, right? Because x is, if f is defined from 1 to infinity, f of 1 is 1, and after that, f will continuously increase because the derivative is always positive. So, f of x is always greater than 1. Okay, now, that is the result that we were, we're going to use. See, f of x is greater than 1 means 1 by, well, let me write it like this. So, x square plus f of x whole square is always greater than x square plus 1. I'm just replacing fx by 1. Something smaller than fx, of course. Now, if I flip it, the inequality will also flip. So, I flipped it, the inequality will also flip. Of course, if 5 is greater than 3, then 1 over 5 is less than 1 over 3. The largest stuff goes at the bottom and hence the inequality flips. Okay, now we know that if we integrate it, then this inequality will stay as it is. So we now have the luxury of doing an in inequality using the integration. So this expression is less than or equal to integral from 1 to x 1 by t square plus 1 dt. I just replaced ft by 1. That's what I did. So now this one becomes f of x minus f of 1 this left hand part 
and the right hand part becomes tan inverse x minus tan inverse 1. Okay, f of 1 is just 1, that's given. And tan inverse x, we know, is always, tan inverse x is always less than pi over 2, less than or equals less than pi over 2, strictly less than actually. So this expression is was all already less than equal to now we can put another less than here replace this tan inverse x by pi over 2 tan inverse 1 is of course pi over 4 so we have the desired result we can just take the one to the other side and we see that f of x is less than or equal to well now we can say strictly less than i guess but less than or equal to definitely 1 plus pi over 4. That is the re desired inequality that we wanted.